Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! And you, Metal Gear! Parody. This video is sponsored by Aniba.com, a fairly new online marketplace where you can get game keys and gift cards for PC, Xbox, PSN, Nintendo and much more. Check out the fantastic weekly deals with up to 70% off. Use the code ICARI during the registration to get another 3% off of every purchase. And have a fun time gaming. If you are a Metal Gear fan, then the name 100 Fires probably rings a bell. If not, the first 100 Fires was a free mobile game released in 2014 with its first episode and then another two episodes in the following years. It's a game series made by the Spanish indie creator David Amado Fernandez. And it's obviously heavily Metal Gear inspired, a hilarious parody of it, so to say. If you played the first 100 Fires or even just watched videos of it, you probably had help from NASA retrieving your sides from outer space. The main character might be called Valero Montenegro, but it is obviously Solid Snake in disguise, pun intended. And the gameplay is also obviously pretty much a carbon copy of the early Metal Gear Solid games on PS1 and PS2. Metal Gear Parody was however not the first thing this indie developer made. The first Metal Gear based game they created was actually Metal Gear Out of Heaven, also a free and non-profit fan game meant to be like an addition to the actual Metal Gear series. For the time it came out it was actually really good and gained a lot of popularity. However, Konami really got their panties in a twist over this. And once the game reached over a million downloads, Konami took it down for copyright reasons. This is the reason the developer decided to create their own Metal Gear lookalike game series. And so we get to its newest chapter, 100 Fires, The Rise of the Red Star. And seriously, it's not even bad. The only negative thing I can think of is that it's only the first episode for now and not the full game. But I have to say it really reignited that Metal Gear fire inside of me because it really has everything the original Metal Gear games had. For example, there are a bunch of VR missions you can do. Here you will learn all the basic controls and the game mechanics which are of course nothing new to someone who played the original Metal Gear games. You have to use stealth and sneaky beaky tactics to get past your enemies, so say hello to the old school view from above and the radar in the corner of the screen. Gotta love how short sighted the soldiers and the cameras in the early Metal Gear games were. The side cones are literally like, what, 1.5 meters big? So you can crouch and crawl on the floor, just like a real snake. Sorry, sorry, I had to. I mean, his name is Montenegro anyway. And if you press the crouch button while you run, you do a dodge roll. First introduced in Metal Gear Solid 2, if I remember correctly. You can take out enemies silently if you sneak up from behind. Who would have thought, right? Or if you are spotted, you can knock them out with a familiar looking 3 hit combo. Yeah, so they are just as annoying as in the actual Metal Gear games and take a lot of hits till they actually see stars. You can also do the knock-knock as you lean to the wall to draw soldiers' attention. And of course there's a box, but no no no, look, look carefully, it's actually a wooden box, not a cardboard one, it's totally not the same. But jokes aside, there are actually things you can do here which were not present in the Metal Gear games. For example, you can actually switch between view from above and the normal third-person view. That way you will be able to see the whole map, which makes spotting things way easy, of course. Aiming and shooting can also be done old-school style in this weird circle motion or the normal 3D aiming, you know, for normal people. In those VR missions you get to test weapons and do some target practice, but other than that it's really nothing special. I would still recommend you to play through all of those missions because the game itself is quite short indeed, and that way you get more out of it. But okay, let's take a look at the actual game. I promise it's better than you think. It lets us know that any resemblance to people in real life is purely a coincidence. 
Hmm, I wonder why they would write something like this. Hmm, also, I'm understood. Now, that's a weird name for the main character. I thought it was actually Montenegro. But yeah, typos aside, fortunately it's not like the first hundred fires, here the characters actually speak English. Well, for the most part. It was 1954, in Cuba. Our guerrilla camp was near La Sierra del Zorro. There were women, children, farmers and workers who fought for the revolution. My wife, Yanelis, had been ill for months. He did not give us any solution. Aren't you a doctor? Why not help her? Los recursos médicos son reservados para aquellos que puedan empuñar un arma. Además, tu mujer no vivirá mucho más allá de esta noche. Sería un desperdicio. That's what the commander said. But I knew he was lying. And Ellis could recover. But certainly not in Cuba. That night. Batista's army attacked our camp. The entire jungle was engulfed in flames. Let's go. We have to escape from here. I have a friend who is waiting for us at the port. If we manage to arrive, he will take us out of Cuba, and we can find someone to help you. She is coming with us. Well, first, let me point out that Snake, I mean Montenegro, actually sounds almost like the real deal. Well, very close to David Hayter, really. The other voice actors are nothing special, but this one here, he is really pretty good. I have no choice. I will. Damn, look at this guy, he is just so badass, just as Big Boss and Venom. He is just going to continue with the person on his back. And he will do everything that way, crawling, fighting. Okay, this, this doesn't make any sense. How is he leaning to the wall with... never mind. He is just so badass that it just works. Somehow. Also, did you notice the sound his daughter makes if you run into her accidentally? It's absolutely hilarious. Anyway, everything goes well and we make it to the boat. Also, I'm pretty sure the guy on the boat is Fernandez himself. Yanellis, we've arrived. We achieved it. Acho, que ya pensaba que no vendría ahí. Venga, nos vamos. Voy a poner cacharro este en marcha, eh. they achieved recovery and finally won but I would never return until many years later Afternoon. This climate must be hard for a Cuban. How do you know that I'm Cuban? We know well who you are, Senor Montenegro. Wait a minute, is that JF fucking K? Because it sure looks like him. 
a hero of the Cuban Revolution with more than a hundred sabotage missions behind him. You deserted two years after the triumph of the revolution to later join the 2056 Brigade in the assault on the Bay of Pigs. After the failure of the assault, you became involved in the Cienfuegos case, where a nuclear device was allegedly detonated. Some locals were witnesses to the incident, and in the area there is the belief that the Virgin of a Hundred Fires appeared in the sky. Of course, all of this is baseless gossip, and we know well what actually happened. Is this possible? The President of the United States? How can you be here? That's because I'm not really here. A hologram. That's right. But this is not all, Mr. Montenegro. We also know that you have a daughter in the United States. And if you want to see her alive again, You'd better do everything we tell you. <laughs> this is the funny part about Hundred Fires. It is without a doubt a parody and it has its funny moments, but also certain events like the death of Montenegro's wife and then the appearance of those historically correct characters it just makes the whole thing become serious all of a sudden, and then you start feeling like you actually play a real Metal Gear game. It's fantastic. Also, in case you are wondering when the funny is actually about to start, don't worry, the comedy aspects roll in pretty hard at times. Stop kidding me, and don't touch my balls. What are you doing here? They will see you. You are not familiar with the technology of visual telecom. Everybody in capitalist countries use it. But uh, don't worry, I'll change the format. Is it possible that you're in front of me? Now it's like, if I could see you in my mind... How is a little monkey communist going to be able to understand the complexity of the technology of our advanced capitalist system? Gringo bastard. Tell me, Mr. Montenegro, do you know the acronym MGS? Ugh. They are the abbreviations of Mejor Garda Silencio. Or, in other words, shut up! In recent days, our spy planes have reported the arrival of nuclear weapons on the island of Cuba. Our spies have also informed us that a certain Japanese developer will visit Cuba in the next few days. A Japanese developer? What Japanese developer? One of the most influential Japanese developers in recent times. You know who I mean. Of course we are talking about... Nuclear weapons. Yes, this Japanese developer will arrive at the port of La Serpiente Floja tonight. Your mission has a single objective. To assassinate the Japanese developer. The life of your daughter in exchange for that of a nuclear weapons developer. Sounds like a fair deal, right? Oh my god, whoever might this Japanese developer be? Hopefully it's not someone important, charismatic and likable, am I right? You can press the crawl button to go under those boxes. Where is the crawl button? Are you stupid because you are a communist, or are you a communist because you are stupid? Press escape and read the game control commands carefully. Okay, okay, enough of this, Mr. JFK. Leave the poor snake alike be. So, the gameplay is literally like the early MGS. 
sneak past enemies, break some necks here and there. Also, it's really recommendable to switch to third person view. The game instantly becomes much easier. Yeah, the game is really kinda easy, feels a bit too easy for a Metal Gear veteran. I mean, unless something like this here happens. But as long as you don't trigger any alarms, everything will be fine. The game is rather simple. There can also be some glitches sometimes. Like once I had this guy, who apparently couldn't decide whether he wants to sleep or be knocked out. Yeah. But for the fact that it has been made by just one person, it still manages to impress at times. It's funny just how well the developer got down this Kojima style. Falta una caja para completar el envío. No partiremos hasta encontrar la caja que falta. Sí, señor. Yeah, does this seem familiar? Using a box to be transported in a truck from one place to another. I guess it still works. Well, once you find the level 1 security card, yep, this is also very familiar, and get access to the docks, the plot begins to thicken. Okay, wanna place bets on who this Japanese developer is? Did you hear that? Something is happening. I mean, who else would it be, seriously? Well, we gotta do what we gotta do. Time to assassinate. From here on, it is rather simple. Step 1. Find the mine detector. Step 2. Get through the minefield. Step 3. Acquire the sniper rifle. Finally! A rifle with a telescopic sight. Now. Well, obviously I won't shoot at poor Mr. Kojima, are you crazy? Nah, but El Che? He doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, let's just ignore the robotic tail for a second. I mean, we all know what this game is called, right? I mean, the game this game is based on, so we know what it actually is. And this boss fight, well, it's basically like the first time you fight Sniper Wolf in the original Metal Gear Solid. Except much easier, actually. The bullets fly really slow, so you can dodge even after he fires the shot. And if you manage to find a good digging in point, he won't be able to hit you at all. But... 
not everything is as simple as it seems. Wow, okay, apparently El Che has been studying under Mr. Kojima and has learned some badass jutsus. Nah, it's not that, obviously. We all know what it's going to be, right? Nano machines. Don't kill him. It's our the Frogianalis. Senor Montenegro is coming with us. God, a Metal Gear with tits! Now that's new. don't want to make it sound like a quote from those shitty sequels, but they fly now? And this is the most painful part. Don't stop now, seriously. You know, I didn't have much expectations for this game, but wow, the Metal Gear formula still works really well. I don't know if I can recommend this game though, because if you watched this video, then you already know everything there is to know about it. But for me, it really was worth every cent. The only thing I have left to say is, when the next part coming out? Because seriously, that, that was awesome. Thank you all for watching.